Okay, very good. Okay, well, thank you very much for the introduction and for the invitation to come to the seminar. I, I wish I could go and visit you, hopefully at some point. But uh, I think for the moment, Zoom is, is working very well, so uh, I'm still at home. So, <clears throat> okay, so uh, so this is work that I, that I just came out a month or so ago in collaboration with Cliff Burgess. Uh, we have been uh, writing a series of a few papers together in the last few months. Uh, but this one is particularly focused into the the the, the string picture and, and and issues about model stabilization and, and inflation. So, <clears throat> and I will touch some of the work when I when I, I will be talking. Oh, sorry. Yeah. Okay. So I start with some general uh, introductory remarks. Um, some challenges that we can say for string cosmology. Uh, that I would say that three related questions. One is the uh, model stabilization, the other one is getting the sitter from string theory, and the other one is trying to get inflation from string theory. Of course, there may be other other um, scenarios that 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 uh, beyond this one, but this is pr probably a conservative uh, approach to say if we can actually uh, get inflation and the sitter from string theory, and when we uh, Take that challenge. We have to address the issue of model stabilization. So essentially, <clears throat> that's the motivation to 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 work on this uh, model stabilization uh, part. Okay, and then, of course, for this audience, I don't have to be that that uh, explicit, but uh, just just to, to be self-contained. I think is a the big issue here is the, the dying cyber problem that came out in 1985. And uh, uh, essentially, one uh, way to say it is that is that uh, uh, we have, in principle, in string theory, when you compactify, there are at least two modules which are, are important to keep track of. And one is the the the, the dilaton, the string dilaton, that uh, measures the string coupling, and the other one is is the overall volume of the extra dimensions. And uh, <clears throat> in both cases, uh, Dyn and Cyber say, well, we expect the potential for them there is zero at at a uh, tree level especially is, uh, you have supersymmetry they're all moduli and uh, and they expect we expect them to the solution of infinite volume and zero coupling should be a free theory should be a, an exact solution and uh, <clears throat> and that means that any 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 deviation out of that you should you should have like a runaway towards infinity uh, from above, of course, we can even from below. There's not, but from below is is, is not very uh, um, physical somehow, and uh, and then the issue is 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 that uh, um, if you have any minimum of the potential, it will have to be triggered by quantum corrections, and if so, the quantum corrections should be playing an important role, and that means that the that they they will be competing with the tree level. And somehow you cannot trust perturbation theory, and so that means that the generic thing is either you have just the runaway, and uh, or if you have a minima, it would be the runaway and a min minima, but that's strong coupling. Um, <clears throat> the motivation we have to go to look for minima which are not a strong coupling or or or, or a small volume is that we know that uh, in nature we have uh, the the couplings in the standard model are weak and tend to be weaker, and also. For calculational purposes, that uh, uh, we would love to have uh, uh, um, uh, weak couplings, and uh, and and also there are hierarchies, hierarchies that we expect that the volume to contribute. So in that sense, it makes sense to search for models for solutions which are uh, weak coupling and large uh, volumes, but which are under control. And that's uh, very challenging, as I think Kuhnrum and collaborators we have they have formulated the sum and conjectures, and one is that. You can only uh, fully trust only if you are in the runaway uh, uh, region, and that's the only region where you can fully trust your calculation. So that shows already that that uh, uh, whatever we do to find the, the uh, non-trivial minima, a weak coupling, and so uh, it will be in regimes that you can partially trust. You have to find weak enough coupling, but never arbitrarily weak, or large and, uh, enough volumes, but never arbitrarily large. Okay. <clears throat> You can complement this argument in the sense that the volume and the um, and the dilaton are kind of uh, 
pseudo Goldstone modes for the scaling symmetries, approximately scaling symmetries of, of, the, of the theory. And, and so drawing towards infinity is the natural uh, way of them getting to the scaling invariant uh, point. And uh, so the, the, the runaway is the, is the natural behavior. Okay, so, and of course, so the, to get a small uh, uh, coupling and large volume, the only thing we can count off is, is given that the string theory doesn't have free parameters are the uh, compactification numbers that you can get and these are fluxes or, or uh, ranks of gauge groups and so on. And those are the, the only things you can play with. And so well, then the model stabilization type to be, I think again, for this audience, I can be quick. Um, I will concentrate on this S, U, and T model, eh? and uh, you term fluxes uh, uh, of, 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 of the three cycles. You can fix the complex structure modular U and the delta on S, but at three levels you have the T, uh, the, I mean the, the carrier modular uh, flat, and uh, <clears throat> and that's already a lot of progress because that allows you to fix supersymmetrically all the complex structure modular it can be hundreds of them and the delta on. And then to get uh, something about the, the T modulus, you have to <clears throat> T model, you have to go to corrections uh, at, from the three level results. And I can see that we have been experiment. Obviously, there are three solutions of that. We can have the quantum corrections of the scalar potential. There will be corrections of the scalar potential and corrections to the superpotential. And the generic case is that the, the superpotential only get number two but of corrections. So there are very small and weak coupling. And uh, so the correction will be dominated by the corrections to the carrier potential, which are perturbative, can be perturbative or non-perturbative. And so the 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 then uh, generic result is that the correction will be dominated by delta k, and that that naturally will give you the runaway behavior. But unless you do something, and, and this something is that there are two ways out so far. One is that uh, you can tune the, the tree level uh, uh, super potential, the other zero, to make it as small as possible to be comparable with the number two the corrections. And then once you do that, you can find a trivial minima and that's the KKLT solution. And the other solution that, that is the large volume scenario is that you can, uh, we can it only works if you have more than one uh, carrier model. Right? So you have one or more carrier model that can be perturbative corrections or the carrier potential for one model those compensate for the number two of the corrections of the other model. Like, and at the end, you find dynamically a minimum where one of the volume goes like e to the minus a tau, where tau is the second modulus. And that means that the volume is exponentially large. And that's what gives the name large volume scenario. Okay, so today I will try to uh, add up a, a one uh, scenario that would be in category one, essentially. There would be a perturbative case that hopefully uh, will lead to something that still is, is is uh, uh, reliable. <clears throat> okay, and uh, one thing that I have to add is is the uh, the KKLT idea of adding an anti-dietary brain at the tip of the throat, and that's that's a way of getting not, not only fixing the model but to, to get in uh, the seater. And uh, I, I need to say something about that because I will use it later. Uh, the something that came out uh, uh, after the original KKLT is that you can describe that presence of anti-brain in terms of a, of a nilpotent superfield x, such that x squared equal to zero. And that superfield is such that you can, the, the real component is not a, a, a propagating field, it's only the, the, the fermionic component psi, and of course the auxiliary field of breaking supersymmetry. <clears throat> and so you can, the nice thing is that you can include this nilpotent superfield into the carrier potential, and the superpotential is also very similar, it, very simple because it, it cannot go, it, cannot, it has to be linear at the, at the most because x squared is zero. And, uh, and once you do that, you plug it, you plug into the original KKLT scenario, you have the potential for KKLT plus something coming from this uh, field x. And that precisely give you the uh, uh, positive term. It's the only contribution I can give you. And uh, the, the power n plus three, where n is determined by the carrier potential here. And uh, there are two cases that people have considered, n equals to zero, that will give you just uh, uh, canonical kinetic terms, or n equals to minus one, that will give you the x, x bar inside the log. And precisely those two values give you what original KKLT had proposed and KKL MMT had proposed. And so that's a nice way of capturing the physics of the anti-brain in terms of uh, 
of a, a specifically supersymmetric model. And we uh, also took that uh, more seriously and actually went to construct models with, with, the, with orienting photons so, such that in the anti D3 brain, there's only uh, uh, the gold sinophil, the, 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 this, uh, this framing field. So that has to be described by, the, by this nilpotent superfield, even though that in general, you can have more states in the anti brain. And I, I will come back to, to, to the more states, but in general, that, that shows that this, this use of this nilpotent superfield for uh, uplifting is, is, is very well uh, um, is justified. And uh, anyway, so over the years, with the last 20 years, there have been a lot of challenges to KKLT and, and LVS. Uh, I, I will not go into them because otherwise it will take me the whole, the whole uh, talk. But essentially, I think it's fair to say that progress has been made, and uh, but yet there are open questions. And this, so it's a very active field. Uh, so we are, there are challenges and, 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 uh, and, 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 and people every few weeks, we have different papers going up and down. So I think that's, uh, is this an active, uh, uh, subject that, that I think the last word has not been said because this is such an important question that we need uh, very compelling arguments to see if we can actually have minima to give you the seater or not. And so it's worth to explore as much as possible. Okay. And the other part of my talk will be about inflation. So let me just summarize. People have constructed a few models of inflation coming from string theory since uh, the 2000s or so. And um, and again, they are all with a good prediction for uh, the spectral index and the tensor, scalar, tensor, uh, tensor to scalar ratio. And uh, but there are also challenges. And challenges are the, for instance, the eta problem, scales. The eta problem is that the corrections of, of the eta parameter, which are of order one, so that's typical supergravity case. Uh, scales that sometimes you, you can um, get, uh, you cannot get the the. The, the, for instance, uh, low scale supersymmetry breaking and large scale inflation at the same time. It's, some of these models are not, have not included model stabilization. So, in that sense, that, that, that's the key thing because you, you have other, otherwise, you have other directions where you can roll. And a contrast to observations. So of course, some of then now we are facing the, the, the progress in observations, and the, the, some models are more uh, are, 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 are in the uh, uh, difficult to just to, to, to satisfy all the observation requirements. So, <clears throat> so let me just remind you of the Kellogg's Linde problem, problem about the, the scales is that you manage to uh, uplift by this anti brain um, uh, to get the sitter. Anything else that you have that give you uh, inflation, then you can have <clears throat> you can have the risk of 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 of, of overshooting somehow. And for that, you require to have the, the Hubble scale to be smaller than the, the, the gravitino mass in KKLT and smaller than the gravitino mass to the three halves in large volume scenario. So in that sense, you cannot have at the same time a large scale inflation and low scale supersymmetry breaking. And so that's it. one of the things that is nice to think of in, in, in string theory because it's only string theory that you have to worry about the two things which are in principle in the independent questions. And people have come out well, addressing this problem. Uh, for instance, we, we, we had this proposal with the, using the volume as an inflaton so that you can infl inflate with a small volume and then roll to, towards the minimum. But this is, uh, we did as, as, as an idea only, but it's, this, it, it's very highly tuned to get something like that. So in, the, in principle, there is an issue whether you get low energy associate or high scale inflation. <laughs> okay, so that's, that was the introduction. And, so now let me go to, to, to the point of my talk. Uh, so start with this again with type 2b. There are, uh, this is the, the, the Lagrangian for the 10 dimensions. You have two scaling symmetries. And I always like to emphasize that it is, it's not by chance that you have two scaling symmetries. One belongs to the SL2R of, of, of type 2b and the other one is an, is an extra scaling symmetry. And having two scaling symmetries is, is a way to, to sh show directly that there are two expansions in, in, the, in every string theory um, with, uh, Lagrangians that one of the alpha prime and the loop. Fernando, Fernando could, yes. sorry to interrupt, could I ask a quick question? Yes, please. These are approximate symmetries, right? Yes, yes. Approximate is uh, uh, approximate accidental symmetries, yes. Yes. And, and that's precisely the, the issue. They have to be broken, so that seems that risk. And, and that the way how you break it 
is is precisely the expansion parameters, the expansion the, the, in, in, in your loop and alpha prime corrections. So essentially, you, you can trace your 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 expansions in terms uh, in, in in the say in the way that how how much you are breaking the symmetries order by order, and that's why there are two symmetries because there are two expansions. For instance, you go to eleven dimensions of gravity, you have only one symmetry, only one scaling symmetry, and it's only one expansion. And but all the string theories uh, in ten dimensions, they all have different. They all have to 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 scaling symmetries, and they have two expansions. So that, that's that's a nice way to to keep track of them. And um, so you have that. You can have an expansion uh, uh, for the e to the minus k over three, which is the thing that that comes in the superfield um, Lagrangian for supergravity. And you have an expansion in in term powers of tau and s, where tau is the overall say volume. Uh, and S is the, is the dilaton. And you can see, you can rephrase the, the dyn cyber problem here in the sense that you have an infinite sum of uh, uh, powers of tau and S, and you have one to find a minimum, then both S and tau have to be of order one. So that's, that will be the, the natural thing that that, that uh, dyn and cyber will tell you. But um, the point that I want to emphasize here is that uh, these were corrections that I had showed that there were just powers in S and tau. Sorry, so this was just to be constant. Question, yes? Yes, sorry. So the this this the, the second symmetry, the one that rescales the metric, does the one associated to tau, right? The volume of the of internal space. Yes. Uh, and you're saying it's broken by the by the fact that that it the that the um, that the man that the compactification manifold has finite volume somehow. That's that's what you're saying, right? Yes, I mean the delta prime corrections. I mean it will be broken. Even the prime corrections okay, by okay. R to the four. Oh, so. yes, the volume in, okay, yeah, because they were also broken in ten dimensions. Sorry. Exactly. Mm -hmm. Yes. So yes. So, but but I think it's nice. I mean the symmetries are there, and it's it's worth exploring them, uh, 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 using them somehow, uh, because uh, you know uh, uh, that's a way of keeping track of of your expansion. Yeah. Very good. So I was saying that that then this is just an expansion in powers. And the coefficients of this A, which I call A, A, NMR. Well, I, I, I use M and R as independent, but this will add together to give the alpha prime. So one will be powers of the curvature and there will be powers of fluxes, but uh, the, 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 it's only M plus R that, that appears. Uh, so this, these coefficients are supposed to be constant here, but we know in, in field theory that there are usually uh, logarithm corrections to your potential, to your uh, theory. and. Uh, so that since I told you e to the minus k over three, it was a relevant quantity, I call that p. And so p, we can have an expansion in tau. Uh, I, I have assumed here from here on that s has been fixed by, uh, by fluxes as in, in, in KKLT and the Lorentz scenario. And, and then I just concentrate on the tau dependence. Uh, I'm skipping the tau to the one half because in principle it's the powers of the one over tau to one half. Uh, so we have addressed that Possibility <clears throat> and prove that that at least in, at a three a loop level in string theory, these are not present. Uh, well, they may not be present at all, uh, but uh, but we have to keep an eye that they may be there. And I started from k or tau and so on because that's where, where people have actually computed and get something. Uh, what I will say from here on, it doesn't matter about power, which power of tau because I will just concentrate on, on the leading power and just work on the line. On the logs, but uh, just to emphasize that uh, is that this correction is a correction that gives you uh, a potential one over volume cube, and that's the one that we use for the large volume scenario. It does the alpha prime cube correction, and this one people have computed in the past, very uh, uh, high and coarse and so, and it is dominating over this one. But this correction it gives you a, a, what is called extended no scale. So essentially. Uh, um, that will, is, even though it's, it's the contribution to this kinetic energy and so on will be dominant over the rest, the contribution to the potential energy is exactly zero. And uh, it's exactly zero because the property to get a zero potential is very nicely expressed in terms of the, the second derivative of this uh, function P is the determinant of that function, of that, of that metric. So the second derivative is zero, then you have a flat potential. And the, no scale, the original no scale, which is just the and three log of tau is just one example of that. And tau plus a constant is another example because the second derivatives are zero. And so you hit, you start hitting uh, uh, here. Okay. So now the, 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 the assumption that we take following 
previous work of many people is that these coefficients that I, I had assumed to be constant actually will be functions of the log of tau. So in, in principle, we know that uh, from normalization group, from, from uh, um, <clears throat> any corrections in, in, especially for marginal operators in four dimensions, they're log of, 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 of the scales that you have and tau is fixing you the scales. And uh, so the scalar potential will, will take a form like this, uh, where you can see it depends on the derivative of k. And uh, if k is a constant, that will be zero. That will be the standard on scale. And then we start, we will get this one. But if k is not a constant, this will be the leading contribution. And so that's, that's what is, we have to take. Fernando, one question. So is yeah. there is there any example in this thing theory in which someone has been able to compute this logarithmic correction for some yeah. field? Yeah. Very good question, very good question. So I have the list of references here. Um, so first of all, Conlon et al. in 2000, uh, I forgot, the, I don't see the year here, but it's around 2009 or so. They, they is, I think Conlon and Palti and, and Conlon, and they, 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 they uh, essentially were trying to fix the, um, there was a general expression for the, for the uh, randomization group equations for, for the, quantum correction for the gauge coupling constants with the uh, low corrections plus, plus uh, threshold effects that uh, Kapitanowski and Louis and, and Nixon have computed. And in order to make that consistent with the structure of the carrier potential and so on, you have to have uh, in, in effect of theory. Then they propose that you have to have a redefinition of, of, the, of, the, of the modulus of the town modulus. And that's precisely the log of the volume. And so they, they, they studied that, that uh, and then uh, also, also to make it consistent with the non particular zero potential so that you get something holomorphic, you have to make a correction to the to the carrier potential and that also gives you the log of the volume. So that was indirect. But then, it's, clear, uh, it's clear that there will be such corrections, of course, because uh, so certainly we do know the log running of the couplings. Exactly. The H theories, and they do appear. And whether it's volume or string coupling, like a heterotic string, it could be coupling, but it's dual to a volume of something else and so on. So in general, Absolutely. they don't mix up. So there's no reason they shouldn't be. Exactly, I think so. That, 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 I think that's, that's very important. And I think sorry, actually- Sorry, sorry may, may I make a comment on this? Mm -hmm. well, we have also thought about these corrections and um, of course there will be logarithms. At some point there will certainly be logarithms. Uh, but the leading term, I have doubts because the leading term, if you have a logarithm in this function K, then you see you get a potential, you wrote it down one over tau to the fourth, which corresponds mm -hmm. to one over volume to the eight third. Yes. And I can, I can compare this uh, to what I expect from the one loop uh, field theoretic correction, which normally is m3 half squared times cutoff squared. Uh, and that correction, which is an, just a naive uh, loop correction in, in field theory with Zuzi breaking and cutoff, in fact corresponds to one over volume to the power 10 third. So I would naively expect that this correction there should be absent at least in the standard, uh, you know, uh, large volume collusive line scale scenario because it is just too strong compared to what I expect in a one loop field theory analysis. You can an yes, I think that, that yes, that, that may, may totally be, 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 be the case. I, that, that I think uh, I have to say, well, um, Green Metal and um, Weissenbacher and then more recently uh, Timo Weigand and, and collaborators. Timo had a nice, uh, nice uh, comparison between uh, uh, this uh, F theory uh, alpha prime corrections to the heterotic dual. And in order to do the matching, he had to match the scales and the scales you have to have the running and the running gave you corrections precisely to this, to the one over tau to the fourth, the volume to the thirds. And also Weissenbacher following the, the, the green metal uh, proposal that he also claimed the same. But I have to say they're all indirect. So this, for me, is totally open question. I think we're, we're trying to understand this better. And then uh, Ignatius and Toniades and collaborators, they found some concrete calculations, uh, uh, loop calculations, in, uh, including this embrace in toroidal compactifications. And they found this log corrections, but in the term, uh, in the next order term, is the tau to the minus nine over two. Yes. I should say that uh, I also agree with Arthur's comment that there, the, these, if you have, for example, multi-moduli, there will be some moduli which has a log piece, but the overall one would not. And an example of it is like, uh, I think a very nice example is type 2B on Calabia threefold, where you talk about uh, pre-potential and Kähler potential in the context of n equal to two, and that we understand. There's no breaking of supersymmetry and everything is spatial geometry, so we know it very well. 
And in that context, you do get, for example, conifold, you get log pieces. And, but those are, those are not, the, those are the, you have multi-moduli. One of the moduli controls the local gauge theory dynamics. And then there's an overall volume, which is a hyper that's not part of the running of the gauge theory that we are talking about. So I agree with Arthur that there will be log pieces for the gauge mm -hmm. theory parts, but these are for contractible things, which is not the one which corresponds to overall volume. So that's, that's also consistent with what I, I know. Yes, I think that that's precisely what the uh, uh, Conlon and Paltig had got, uh, uh, they, they got. I think precisely only for the blow-up modes they were getting the corrections. For the large volume, they did, they couldn't say anything. So, but I, I think that's consistent. Yes, you're right. Yes. So, anyway, so we assume that 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 is I think hard to say is an assumption at the moment, I mean, based on the on this uh, people's uh, claims, is that there will be corrections to this k. For us, it was worrisome. Is worrisome. <laughs> Because that's precisely will give a uh, that's an argument that people will be given to say oh then then this will be dominant over the large volume case and then uh, then the, it may change the, the the minimum of the large volume because this this will go like tau to the four one four and this is uh, one one over tau to the four and then tau to the minus one over two um, and, and but on the other hand you say well maybe you can play maybe they can be interesting by themselves and that's what we are exploring now. So we said, well, if you have logs, then you have uh, essentially a, 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 to consider the sum of our logs, like we do in field theory. And then you have naturally the, the romanization group equations. And so essentially you, you can sum over uh, this resumation of logs and, and have uh, uh, <clears throat> just tau like at your scale, and then you have the beta function, and then you can solve the romanization group equations that you have that corresponding uh, coupling in terms of the one over the log of the tau. And so essentially what we explore is the possibility of having the potential to be a function of log of tau divided by tau to the four plus higher orders. And if tau is very large, this will be the, the, the dominant piece. And in that sense, you can see that uh, you follow the logic of Dynan Seinberg that you have this, this function, you will be a, a function of, over all the powers of alpha. And so the, the natural thing is that you get alpha four to one, but alpha four to one will give you this alpha zero log of tau zero to be of four to one. So log of tau zero uh, is one or alpha zero, and that that will be exponentially tau zero will be exponentially large. So that that's the that's the argument we can see uh, uh, working. As I say, this works for any whatever the leading power is. This this argument will 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 be, will be useful. Okay, so we took a concrete example, and the concrete example is just uh, because, I mean, that was just very uh, general. And so have a, a, a so that have this function only of the log of tau uh, plus corrections, and, and then we can have an expansion uh, uh, in terms of the different, different powers. And, and then we say, well, let's take for concreteness uh, to, to see if we can get something to, uh, that works. We said the first three coefficients to have a hierarchy between them, k2 over k3 for the epsilon and k1 over k3 for the epsilon square. So you can find a minimum for this potential where you can have an alpha for the epsilon and then log of tau is for the one over epsilon. And again, so that means your tau is exponential of one over epsilon. So that's, you get a minimum. And, and here, depending on the range of the coefficients, the minimum can be anti the sitter or can be the sitter. So this is small range where, where you can get the sitter and a small range you can get anti the sitter. <laughs> Or you can get the runaway, of course. So essentially, you can. That's that's a way of getting something large volume already the sitter from a totally perturbative uh, way. Uh, and I have to say, from this uh, concrete example, we are doing this assumption of the uh, tuning or epsilon or the one of epsilon squared to be to deal with only the a few of the coefficients. But in general, the argument will be you have the infinite sum. The natural thing to get. Is 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 uh, is, is uh, uh, exponentially large. I mean, the, the, the log of tau to be exponentially large. Okay. So, Fernando, just to clarify, um, you're not saying that you can tune from ADS to the sitter. You're saying that in this scenario, you will get these parameters from the UB completion from string theory, and then it it, it, it can be both ways. Is that exactly. Correct? Depending on the values, you get one or the other one. So, yes, yeah, exactly. Okay. Very good. And then you can study supersymmetry breaking with the F terms and so on, and get more or less a picture similar to what we get in the large volume scenario with the soft terms and supersymmetry and so on. So 
that that is uh, um, for instance for tau to be 10 to the 6 you get uh, uh, you avoid the cosmonic model problem by this way and then you get the uh, gaginos if you have gaginos to be uh, of, of, of the tv scale or so and the scalar masses to behave here so that's it that's split susi okay so let me emphasize the role of nonlinear susi here and the inflation so essentially we, we will consider the three ingredients we, we start the uh, x super field as click alt did now we don't need it for uplifting because we can get uplift we can get the city without it but we will use it for inflation and then we need an inf inflaton field, which is called phi, but we also call relaxon because if you think about dark energy, this will be a re relaxation field. And, and use the, the tau field that we have been using, which is the, the scale invariant uh, uh, pseudo mode. And then instead of just having just the X super field, you can have uh, you can have the whole standard model you want in, uh, uh, by using this nonlinear super, uh, realized supersymmetry. So you want to have the quarks and leptons only fermions. You have a super field Y, so that X, Y equal to zero. For gauge fields, uh, X, W equal to zero. For scalars, you have to have this constraint. And if you want the, the, the scalar to be real, you have X, H bar equals to X, H bar X. So you can have a whole Lagrangian for all these fields and the, um, that we, you can think about them to be located on the, on the anti-brain, but in principle for any, any supersymmetry breaking uh, um, place. Uh, and then, um, and then you can have an expansion for the carrier potential for X, uh, not only the quadratic piece, but you, have, you still have a linear piece that, that, that is, is, you cannot just uh, uh, absorb it. And the super potential again, linear in X, but uh, uh, for instance, it can be depending on H and H bar because, the, the, because of this property that X H bar is, is, is chiral. So in that sense, you can have that in super potential. And you can think, think about having the whole standard model realize that we look at, uh, and think about the phenomenological aspects of this, but I, I will not go into that detail. Well, for us, for inflation, uh, so we have the same picture that we had before, uh, a to the minus k over three, this expansion, but now this function will be depending on so on the on the delet, on the inflaton field, the and the log of tau, but also on the x field, and again expanding in powers of x, uh, quadratic, linear, and, and non x. Okay, and then you write the, the scalar potential. Now the presence of of, of uh, x means that besides the one over tau to the four, remember p is proportional to tau mother. This was the leading order for us, but now these extra terms, which are breaking in supersymmetry, you give a correction of one over p square and one over p cube. That if wx equal to zero, that will just uh, disappear and we'll just get the same result we had before. But if if um, if you are in the regime where p or tau is not that large. Uh, in principle, this will be the, the dominant dominating parts of that. Okay, where we can, we know what a and b and c are in terms of this uh, function scales. How am I doing with time? Okay, I still have. So, a... Yeah. So ten minutes or so. Something? Yeah, so in principle, we usually do 45 minutes talk and then like uh, uh, extended discussion, but it's okay if you go a bit over time. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So then we, we, we separate the region between the late times and the inflationary region. So the late times, we solve for uh, Wx. Notice that I, I, Wx is, is any function. In the case of KKLT, it was uh, considered to be a constant, but now it's a function of this uh, supposed to be inflaton field. Okay, <clears throat> so we can just solve for that. Uh, and, and, and that will give you Wx to be small because this goes like one over tau. And... and <clears throat> So once you solve for that, as I said before, you plug in and you get an, uh, the potential to be one over p to the four, and then we'll, it will reduce to the case that we had before. Okay, so that's the late times thing. There's a minimum and at late times, and then you have your the city or whatever you get. But in the regime where tau is not that large, uh, you can still explore the potential and uh, and essentially you can um, very look for a, a, a point which is stable in the tau direction because we want to see how how phi changes so and then uh, essentially you can eliminate uh, salt for 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 tau and plug it back and you have a potential only for <clears throat> for phi because like wx uh, to the four times some constants okay 
And then you can study this potential as a function of phi to see if you can get a slow roll. That will be that your, your inflate, inflaton field. And so the conditions for a slow roll are this, uh, for epsilon eta to be small, uh, related to conditions on, on Ws and the derivatives of Ws, okay? So that's a general picture in general. So that's the, 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 the way you can have an uh, inflaton. So now I want to apply that those ideas to the concrete case of brain anti brain inflation. So let me just recall what anti brain anti brain inflation was. You, in the natives, Valley and Thai, they had this uh, a potential between two D brains, and they say, well, they are BPS, so there's no attraction. So any, anything you can break it, you may have a slow roll, but you can compute anything because, I mean, the, the potential was zero. So we, then we came with the idea of having a brain and anti brain. So where you can compute the attraction of them. And the potential is has the, this, these two terms. The first term is the sum of the tensions of the, of the brains. And the second term is the is one over five to the four, which is the Coulomb potential, the attracting, uh, attracting of them. And the nice picture the thing about this is that when you get closer to each other, at some point, this, uh, there's an open string mode that becomes massless. And after that critical iteration, uh, the, uh, it, uh, it will become tachyonic. And that would trigger the end of, of, of inflation. So that's a nice, uh, a, a nice uh, way to end inflation, a very stringy way. Uh, however, once you do the calculations, you don't get a slow roll. Uh, eta, you need the, the extra dimensions to be smaller than the separation of the brains, and things didn't work. And on top of that, this was done in the 2001 or so, and so there was no model stabilization. So essentially, the model was not working. But then KKL MMT reconsidered this model, but now in the, in the KKLT scenario uh, setup, uh, where essentially we have the same KLT setup, but then you have a, a D3 brain going towards the anti D3 brain. And then since you are in, in the warp region, so you have a, the warp metric there, and then you can compute now the scalar potential. We have the same two terms, but now the terms depend on omega, which is omega is, is a warp factor that goes like e to the minus the ratio of these two integers or so. And so you can make it as small as you want. And that's that's beautiful because then epsilon and eta can be very small because there are epsilon is proportional to omega square and eta is proportional to omega. And omega is e to the minus k over m or something. So it's very small. <clears throat> so so that was the ideal scenario for yes, Sorry, can I ask what is what is omega exactly? Is it like the length of the throat or uh, no, omega is the word factor. I don't see. Oh, it's the word factor. It, okay. it's, it's, omega is e to the minus four. I, I, I see, I see. It's e to the minus uh, the ratio of these two the two fluxes. Right. So how flat can you do it depends on 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 how you can glue the exactly how you glue the throat to the to all of the calabella. To the calabella, mm -hmm. and then that depends on the fluxes and so on. Yes. And and also on the, on the on the on the dilaton because the, the GS appears there. Yeah. <clears throat> So in principle, this looks like an ideal scenario for inflation, uh, and you can compute eta, and epsilon, and so on, and they can be very small. However, this was done, and then you, you needed, precisely this was KK element that you needed to have the modelized stabilization part. And then they faced the, what is called the eta problem. The eta problem was that the, the, the whole potential uh, dependent on, on the overall volume, which was included the, the tau, but also the, the, the brain separation field. As, as, as part of one, one single combination. And, and that's the, <clears throat> but when in the KKLT scenario to stabilize them, the, the super potential has to depend uh, on holomorphically on T and phi, in particular in T. And once you depend on T, then that means that the scalar potential that depends only on one of the volume cube, you have to span, and we just span in powers of uh, uh, phi bar or phi over tau, then you get a term which is phi bar phi, uh, that uh, uh, when you, Eta, remember, is the, the second derivative of v with respect to phi divided by v. So uh, this factor cancels, and then you get something of order one, essentially. Uh, so that means that that uh, uh, whatever uh, small eta was there, once you you include the stabilization part, you you get a contribution to eta of order one. And then people took seriously to cancel this this thing and the fine tuning. And there were a lot of beautiful papers by Bauman, McAllister, and other people to, uh, to, to find corrections to the W as a function of phi that cancel this one and yet and, and leave the, 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 the eta to be small. But that required a lot of fine tuning, and, and uh, uh, so it was, it was not ideal. <clears throat> okay. So now we revisited into this formalism that I'm, I'm discussing you 
uh, using the normalization group induced model stabilization and this nonlinear uh, supersymmetry. Okay. So now the low energy effective action, uh, the carrier potential will depend on T on X and phi, like N minus three log of P. <clears throat> and I might write the expansion for P and we're now K, K and so on, functions of, of, of log tau. The super potential will depend on Wx as a function of phi on phi bar. And I, sp I span the, this K, as I said before, no X, linear in X and quadratic in X. And then I can write the scalar potential. Again, the same as, as I did before, but now with a concrete expression for um, W of phi, which I don't know if I, yes, I wrote it here. W is A minus B of phi to the four. So now I, I included the brain separation into a supersymmetric, nonlinear supersymmetric uh, 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 theory. Before, remember the KKLT had included, no, sorry, uh, people after KKLT had included the, the, the presence of the anti-brain in terms of, a, of the, giving you the brain tension uh, in, in terms of, of a nonlinear realized supersymmetry. And now we are also including the brain interaction in terms of as a super potential via uh, uh, phi or four. So phi, phi is, in, is, is in, in, the, in, in, in this WX. Okay, so now we know what WX is and we had written the, all the whole formalism for arbitrary WX, so we can just read the result. And you can see probably more graphically, the situation, the potential looks like this. For relatively small tau, uh, then tau is, is fixed, but phi is not fixed, phi is rolling and it's rolling uh, according to this Coulomb interaction. And at some point you will get a, a, to, to a region where you get a minimum and then for large, uh, uh, but, but, the, but then the real minimum for in the tau direction is not this one because this was only, only for, the, for, for rolling. And then you get a, a minimum for tau very large. I put tau uh, 10 to the 26 to be a, a extreme, but it can be 10 to the 10 or 10 to the eight or so to get some realistic. So essentially you have the two regimes, the inflationary regime, where the volume is not all large and you have brain anti brain inflation and the late time regime where the volume is fixed very large. So this automatically addresses the, the K, uh, Carlos Linde issue because while inflation is happening, the volume is not as large. So the gravitino mass is very heavy. So there's this condition of the gravitino mass competing with the Hubble constant is okay. Whereas the, what is important for low energy, super, low energy supersymmetry is the gravitino mass today which is the, the, the value of the gravitational mass when, when, uh, when you fix it to the very large volume. And, and that can be very small. Uh, they, they can be, uh, yes, uh, uh, much smaller. Okay. So essentially that, that's, that's the, the picture we get. And then, um, so, and then the eta problem, precisely since the stabilization is perturbative, then actually KKL MNT had said in, in the paper already, if we, if we would have had an, a perturbative way of stabilizing the moduli, then there would not be an ETA problem because we don't have to separate the tau and the phi, phi uh, tau, tau and phi bar phi, because we can only con always consider together. So there's no real bark reaction. Uh, and then and then that's precisely what we have. There's, we don't have the issue about, remember we had in the case, uh, we had uh, the big problem was that there was the, the holomorphic thing. So the combination of tau and phi by phi cannot enter into W because it's, it's holomorphic and phi bar phi is not holomorphic. Whereas now we don't have a W and everything is, 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 is appearing in terms of the volume. So that's, that's the, the, eta, the eta problem issue. And then, um, then the Coulomb potential, as I say, is, is, is uh, in, embedded into the whole supersymmetric formalism and the brain separation. Uh, so the gravitational mass can be much greater like, but while inflating than after inflation. So that's the Carlos Lind issue. And you can study the, the, the slow roll. You can you compute epsilon and eta and, and see what you get. And at the end, uh, to get to fit with the, with experimental values, with the, the, uh, uh, dense, uh, the amplitude of density perturbations and, and, and so on, we have, you get the, the tensor to scalar ratio 10 to the minus eight. So it's too small, unfortunately, to be, uh, accessible to the next round of experiments. And but you get NS to be on the right spot if you have 50, 60 folding, so it fits very well with inflation. So in that sense, that, that is uh, just addressing model stabilization with inflation and, and, and brain anti brain, uh, or less revived. So before finishing, I, said, I can also add, uh, I remember I told you that when the brain and anti brain are 
distracted each other. There was an, uh, this uh, um, tachyon that will, uh, uh, the, the open stream mode that will become tachyonic. And we have a way to represent that in, into this effective field theory by just adding in, in the anti brain. So we can add matter fields, uh, scalar field, we can call it a Higgs. And, and you have the, the picture of the scalar potential. You have, in terms of the Higgs, you have a quartic term, a quadratic term, and the quadratic term have a, the sign is uh, can be positive or negative depending on, on the value of phi and this and this constants and so that's precisely the, like the in the higgs mechanism at some point when well it is inflating uh, you have a positive uh, higgs mass and after that you get a critical value and then the, you have a change of sign and then the, the then the field well well the inflation finishes you you go to the to the broken phase and you you, you have the minimum in both uh, Fernando, can i ask so in, in this class of models, reheating is very stringy, right? It's like like uh, uh, brain to brain condensation happens at the string scale. So you, you you're basically saying that the reheating energy scale is the same as some possibly warped down string scale. Are there any signatures coming from that? Uh, no, 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 no. Uh, well, this, the main signature of all this is uh, cosmic strings, of course. That, that's uh, that's uh, that people study in the past, like uh, Pachinsky and Copeland and so. Uh -huh. um, but the reheating itself, it was there's a beautiful paper by Kaufman and and Pilging uh, 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 where, where they study uh, yeah, reheating depending if, if the standard model is, is on the brain that co uh, collides or it can be a hidden brain. And so in both cases, you can see how you excite the modes in the, in, in the standard model. And, and the, I mean, there's plenty to be understood there, but I think it's, uh, there was something people really studied in, in the past. Um, and I think we're not adding anything to, to, to what the picture was. Right. So what I wanted, the only thing I wanted to ask is if I say I have any model of inflation, maybe this one or a different one where, you know, the inflaton is like some open string field at the end, there's tachyon condensation. Is there like any universal signature of that? Because tachyon condensation is a very particular process, right? But that, that was... Yes, but that's precisely, yes, that was, that's what I told you, you know, uh, precisely the cosmic strings comes because of the tachyon potential. And so, but I can have, but I can have cosmic, because, strings. Have, yeah, but these cosmic strings are this particular cosmic strings from the from the tachyon, and then, then you can uh, people then you can see what is the tension depending on what the scale that you yeah. what the pressure and so on. So in that sense, that there's and 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 uh, what kind of uh, people have found ways that these are different from the standard cosmic strings. And so in that sense, that uh, they would be very stringy. So at some point there was uh, like a lot of excitement because people have claimed that they had seen some signature of strings, and I remember Joe Pachis getting very nervous and talking to the experimentals and so on in the past and unfortunately the, the, the signature was gone um, but anyway so at least this one i have to emphasize is that um remember that that after after uh kkl and mt essentially when people were uh, using this uh, coulomb potentials for for inflation that that was not stringy at all because the essentially the whole thing disappeared because of the data problem so now we can revive somehow this these potentials because uh, they fit into this modest relation picture. So here you're, Fernando, I'm just trying to make sure you're, you're, you're trying to write a phenomenological model to see what yeah. would be like an effective field theory. Exactly. Whether or not this can come from string theory or not is the kind of uh, main, exactly. main question that you're not addressing. Am I correct? Yes, exactly. So, well, well there well, are reasons to think that- but I, I separated between the two parts. The, the, the reason, part, I, the reason I want to bring this out is that there are strange features with what, you, what you're just drawing here, which is, if I would just say it. So if you had this control about where you can end up with the potential, you can move it a little up or down. For example, you can get a little ADS or a little dissenter just by tuning your parameters just a tiny bit. You get into major trouble because you can, if you can make the potential very sufficiently small with negative value, you have a huge number of degrees of three freedom. Mm -hmm. And so therefore a continuous change over your theory cannot lead to an infinitely many possible different value degrees of freedom. It's like n goes to infinity for the ADS context, which is impossible. So therefore this is telling you that it's not gonna happen this way. <clears throat> I don't know if I follow what you're saying. I'm just saying, if you think about your holographic dual object. Yes. If you take the ADS to be very, very tiny. Mm -hmm. And if you have this tunable parameter, it's like saying you have a tunable parameter of large number of degrees of freedom in your theory, which is impossible. Uh, which tunable parameter? The cosm value of the cosmological constant. Notice the value of the potential at the minimum. If that's oh, right. you can tune, okay, yes. you okay. get a strange situation where you can just tune it a little up or down above or below zero, mm -hmm. and you'll be in a huge difficulty. That's a good point. That's a very good point. Yeah, I can so see So this is an obstruction to having something like this. 
that's an interesting point. Okay, let, let, let's think about that. Yeah. Anyway, and uh, <clears throat> so one thing that is curious again, and is I put a question mark here because it's a. Uh, um, is that the remember that we wrote this effective field theory um, with the superpotential for the brain separation? Uh, when there will be an extra correction for higher phi, for higher values of phi, this will be only the, the linear. Order. But it, it is a supersymmetric, um, uh, super, I mean, a supersymmetric uh, 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 effective field theory, uh, but not linearly realized supersymmetry. So, uh, in in principle, the potential will be is essentially wx squared, so it will be this square plus correction, and uh, then um, it looks that whatever for large phi was looking like the the um, uh, standard Coulomb potential one over five to the four. When phi gets was getting smaller and smaller, then the potential change uh, shape, and at the end that will give you a minimum, and it becomes repulsive. Of course, that would be very exciting, except that the minimum is precisely is in the regime where you stop trusting the effective theory. So it's, it is something that, 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 that we don't control. But this is something to, 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 to think about because essentially what people say, at the end, brains and anti-brains annihilate and, and, and that would happen. And, and then, the, the, uh, then we just uh, give some radiation or something. But this may hint at that there may be something else. Something else that, that I would like to to end up with is that um, <clears throat> um, the in th there's something that people do not understand in this brain anti brain picture is that you have this tachyon when you go from one brain to the anti brain this tachyon field is charged not only on the u1 in one brain but it's also charged on the u1 of the other brain so when when they condense they it, when the tachyon condense uh, then it breaks a combination of these two u1s, a linear combination of these two u1s. And uh, the question is, what happened to the other u1? And uh, as far as I know, this still this is still a mystery. So people don't know what happened to the other u1, even though the brain disappeared. So we were wondering if this this kind of approach could give us some idea of what happened to the other u1, but it's something to 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 uh, to leave it up to something. And if you have any comments on that, I would be it would be uh, interesting to hear. Okay. So let me just finish. So essentially, th this um, generalization group picture may address some of the questions of uh, Daniel Sauer, which I think is, is worth taking it seriously and, and to study more, uh, in particular, these uh, uh, low corrections to, to the scalar potential that have not been that much explored. Uh, so in that sense, you will get the perturbative model of stabilization in this regard. Uh, then we have a super combine of this approach together with low energy nonlinear realized supersymmetry. You can address uh, and bring back the the brain anti brain inflation that people had abandoned, say somehow in the past. And then there are many, many open questions. Of course, the, what happened actually at the end of inflation, as I was saying. Well, then you can have explicit string models where you can actually see this this uh, logs playing a role. So I think there's plenty to be done here, and I think it's, it's an interesting thing to to, to consider. Okay. So, well, thank you. Mm -hmm.